okay, I think we are on. Hello, everybody. How many of you are excited that we are seeing Margo here today? <laughs> what I'm going to do today is Margo is very busy right now because the Remembering Tigers Kickstarter is ending in 24 hours. Before we begin, type in the chat if you like tigers. <laughs> type yes, okay? Also type yes if you have always been wanting to learn how to do more conservation work. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a quick intro about Margo and then we'll go into three quick questions and that's it. And then Margo can be back to the, <laughs> the very important work. All right. Margo Reggett, she's not only one of the best wildlife photographers in the world, but in 2016, she founded Remembering uh, Wildlife in 20, is it 2016? Is it the, where the first book was launched, Margot? Uh, yes, it came out in 2016, yeah. Yeah, in 2016. And in just eight years, uh, Remembering Wildlife has donated over a million dollars to conservation projects to help uh, save the animals. And in 2023, Margot was awarded an MBE for the conservation of uh, wild animals. Can you even imagine this, right? So let's give a warm <laughs> welcome to Margot. She's my hero and I'm sure that she is yours too. Margot, so I know that remembering wildlife, it all started at a moment when you saw a poached elephant in Kenya. And I actually have this question for the longest time. Like for most of us, if you guys agree with me, like when we see something like that, like a poached animal, we probably will just feel sad. And then we'll share with some friends and say, oh my God, I'm so sad. But like no one would actually go ahead and do something. And Margot, after that, she actually created Remembering Wildlife and there's a million dollars raised and, and doing all this. And it was just fascinating if you think about that. So I want to see if Marco can bring us back to that moment in Kenya when you saw that, like what was going in your mind and how did you come up with this idea and what were the obstacles? Yeah, a, a lot of things all happened at the same time. The actual incident, I was staying at a place called Lakipia Wilderness Camp, which lots of people are now going to see Giza, the Black Leopard, but I was there actually to see African wild dogs at the time, but we were woken up at about 4 a.m. by the sound of a lot of hyenas going crazy. So we knew something big had happened and we didn't know what. So at first light, we went to explore and actually there you can get off on foot. And we went deep in the bush or the guide went first and then he said, it's safe, you can come in. Obviously, we didn't do anything unsafe. But what we found was the, the elephant who had died, the hyenas had started to eat him. But he still had his little tusks. And I was saying, what's going on? Young elephants, he was about 14 years old, don't just die. What, what's happened? And they said, ivory poaching is rife. And he would have been poisoned uh, with a poison arrow by poachers who shot him. He would have bolted from them. So they got away from the poachers. But it probably would have taken three or four days for the poison to go through his system. And then he would have died a very slow and painful death. And I was just, it, it, you're clutching your heart. That's how I felt. I just was so upset and so angry. I'd been photographing elephants the day before and I just had this feeling. I was like, no, I'm not having this. I'm not having it. This is not acceptable. And I just filled with this rage and thought, what can I possibly do? And I'd been inspired because I'd seen other photographers like Will Barard Lucas had done a book a few years before and he'd raised his funding on Kickstarter, which I know we'll come on to. So I knew a little bit about how that worked. And I also knew a lot of photographers by that point because I was working in the Maasai Mara as a resident photographer on and off. And you see the same faces like our mutual friend Federico Veronese. So I knew him and I knew quite a few other photographers. I started to formulate this idea about a, a book with lots of photographers because I figured if I did one just by me, no one would know who I was and we wouldn't sell the book. But if I got lots of people like Federico and Jonathan and Angela Scott and Franz Lanting and Art Wolf to give me a picture each, that would be something that people would want. And so I started approaching people and said, would you be willing to give me a picture? I remember sitting, I met Federico for breakfast after morning game drive at Main Crossing and the Masai Mara. And I sat down and I said, I've got this idea. And would you think you'd let me use one of your pictures? And I wasn't sure if you would, because I had no track record. So everyone was trusting me that I'd make a decent book. And, and he said, yes, of course I would. And in the end, actually, I chose one of his pictures for the cover of that first book, which is beautiful. But yes, and I'd seen people work, as I said, raising money on Kickstarter in the past. So I had a bit of an idea about how it might happen. 
I could talk for hours, so I should shut up and let you ask the well, question. I, I, I love that. That's just fascinating. I just had a quick chat with Federico a few days ago. I know that you have a background in PR, right? Uh, be yes. Before that. And was that the first thing that came to mind when you say, okay, I can combine the two experience? How did you even have that courage to uh, do something like that? Yeah, I say it's just I worked in PR for 20 years before. So I'd actually run a business and I'd worked my way up from the graduate to the chief executive. And I'd done a management buyout along the way and then sold the business. I'd run businesses. And so I did feel confident that I could run a business and also that I had done big PR campaigns for multinational companies like Unilever and, and Coca-Cola. So I knew I had the skills to pull a project of this size together. Um, and in a way, I'd been looking for something. I loved working as a resident photographer in the Mara, but I did feel like I was not giving back to the animals. Uh, and I don't know if you ever get this feeling, but you sit and you photograph these animals and they're wonderful. You're not paying them like you would a model. And I kept feeling like I was taking and I wasn't giving back in some ways. When this idea started to form in my head, I realized I had the opportunity to not only raise awareness of poaching, and at that time it was going to be a one-off book on elephants, but also to raise money for anti-poaching work, which is what I wanted to do. I was like, if I can stop one other elephant from going through the pain that this elephant has gone through, then I'll have achieved something. So that that was my ambition. As I say, it was just going to be a one-off book at that point. That is so inspiring. So my second question is, remembering tigers. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes. So this will actually be the ninth book. So as I said, Elephants was going to be the, a one-off book, but it sold out in two months flat. And then that everyone started saying what's next. And, and they haven't stopped asking me that since in the last nine years. So now we make a book a year every year. And on the 1st of January, we announce um, what it's going to be. And our purpose is always to raise awareness of the, the conservation issues that animal is facing, and then to raise funds for organizations who are working to protect it. And I do feel in a way, it's like a tribute to each of these species about what they're like in the wild at this moment in time in history. And we call it remembering because in case 20, 30 years, we didn't save them now, these books would just be the memorial to what they've been like. And that's supposed to be quite provocative and make people get upset at that thought that we have to save them now. I keep going every day. I'm lobbied by people suggesting other species that we should include and, and clearly tigers um, deserve a book as well. They're such a charismatic, amazing animal. Anyone who's ever seen one, you get a shiver down your spine when you see one for the first time. So yes, we've got 70 photographers contributing. We've also got the who's who of conservationists in the Indian tiger world. So Dalmik Tapa is writing the forward. We've got Dr. Ulas Karanth writing a behavioral essay for us. Belinda Wright is writing an essay about tiger conservation and she fights a lot for wildlife crime. And yeah, I've just met some amazing people and they all have just embraced it. So I truly think our ambition always is to make the most beautiful book ever seen on the species. And I think the lineup of images and the conservationists who are writing the, the pieces for the book is going to be pretty amazing. That's, that's fascinating. And I think from the audience, I did see some of the people who, who actually got accepted into remembering tigers, like Turkey, mm -hmm. you know? and some other people too. As a photographer, we always believe that you're trying to take good photos that evoke emotion, but then we never know what is the next step. And you really help the photographers to realize the dream to really save the animals that we love. Let me just share the screen so that maybe we can talk a little bit about the Kickstarter. Because for some of us, the Kickstarter concept is new. So everybody, I'm going to share the link after the meeting. But if you just go to Google and search Remembering Tigers, you should be able to see the first search is the Kickstarter. So from here, you see this the intro video. And can you imagine, it's already $194,000 raised. And I think it broke the record this year, Margot, that it like... It, Not uh, yet. Not yet. Not uh, yet. So, oh, not yet. Uh, last, okay. last year for leopards, we raised more than that. So yes, yeah. it, it's a bit like watching a fruit machine for me. I just saw the number go up slightly. So you're staring at it, hoping it'll go up and that people will pledge. Because every time it pledges, I get an alert on my phone and I can wow. see that Tin Man has bought a book. So I spend <laughs> a month looking at my phone. I saw that because you have a certain goal and it was reached like in a few minutes by right, this year. Yeah. So what we do is historically, I set out to raise in pounds, £20,000, because that was the cost it was going to be that first year. 
to make the elephant book to make 1000 copies so it's a bit of a just nod to the history we always set out to raise that 20000 but in reality if we only raise that we'd only make a thousand books and we need to make many more books than that like we printed seven thousand leopards last year because there's such demand for them but we did hit it that twenty thousand we hit it in eight minutes this year um, <laughs> yes and i think yeah, this I, is sometimes i don't know if anyone's going to support it so i literally turn it on and i sit there like this thinking oh no what if they're not there oh no um, come and, on and it's we, we need to let more people know about this super meaningful project to help some of you who are not familiar you can log in using your Facebook or Gmail or email accounts. And once you log in, you see this page. And what you can do is you just click on this spec, this project, and then boom, it's not like just buying Remembering Tiger's book, but actually this is more fun. By the way, it's less than 24 hours now, right? And so what- No, it says 13 hours, you can see. Oh, okay. When you click back, you can select the amount you want to donate. And of course you can donate any amount, but then when you donate 45, you can get a book, right? What is the fun thing is you can pledge more and there are a lot of uh, cool stuff. So for example, Marco, what, what is the one that you recommend people to try? <laughs> if people, you just gone past jewelry there. And if you keep going, we have an amazing photographer who actually creates um, pieces for us, which are based on photographs from the book. So if you keep going, you'll get to the next one there stop go back slightly yeah so there you've got a jumping pendant jumping tiger so that's actually based on a photograph by one of our photographers vladimir czech jr who's an amazing photographer and so the jewelers actually created that piece there's only 10 ever made they're hallmarks they're numbered so it's a completely unique piece and you get that necklace and then it's on the back, it says Remembering Tigers. And then you also get a copy of the book. So these are one-off unique rewards that we've got. And, and say, if you keep scrolling through, we've got various safaris and visits. So here, this, this is amazing. Like this one is three nights at any of the properties that Pug Dundee have got in India. So you've got Tadoba, Pench, Pura, Pana, the amazing different parks. And it's such, a, that's like half price basically. And yet the money is not going to Pug Dundee because they've sponsored us, they've donated this. The money comes into us and gives us cash flow because what we need now is a lot of cash to, to print the books basically. I want to add some more about what Margo was saying. I was just looking at it. Some of these uh, tours, you can see the prices. This one is a $1,650, but the cost was actually like a twice or three times more. So basically, if you pay this amount, you get like a travel experience that is worth more than $5,000. But all the money that you pledge actually goes into remembering wildlife to help the animals. So this is, you're actually saving money by helping animals. Also, it's very limited quantity too. If you want to get it, you should just try as soon as possible. And there are all these, I can't even be believe the price actually. <laughs> so usually this costs $10,000. $10, it's going to be ending in a few hours. And once it's gone, then there's no more. And again, just like what Margot say, it is just so important. The animals really need our help. And when she mentioned about the sending a chill down the spine when she saw the first tiger, I had the same thing. I thought I saw big cats before, but when I first saw this tiger walking towards the vehicle, I was like, oh. <laughs> so like this fascinating, beautiful animal. And this is the best way to help. I don't want to take too much more time of Margo. So everybody, if you are passionate about this, think about what Margo was going through with that poached elephant and she jumped into the helping the animals. One last question before we end it. Like, by the way, how many of you think that I should invite Margo in the future for a long interview? This is just uh, amazing stories here. So what I want to ask one last question is, Margo, uh, a lot of the listeners right here are fellow photographers. And we all uh, love nature as well. We all have a dream. We, we want to achieve our dream. As a photographer, sometimes we feel helpless. Right? The dream seems to be so far-fetched and we feel fear, we feel lost. And when we talk to other people, think that we are crazy. If you can give like one final advice to us when we are questioning ourselves, what would you say to us? Everyone feels that. <laughs> <laughs> including me. So don't don't think that there's lots of people who are just cocksure of themselves. Just find a way, try and find your purpose. Say, when I was taking the pictures in the Masai Mara, I was having a lovely time, but I was a bit like, what's the point? I, to take, And it sounds 
bit arrogant because I was so much there, but it's another leopard picture. What am I going to do? I've already got a thousand leopard pictures. I then found a way to, to give back, find a way that is meaningful to you. And whether it's making books for your family or to sell for calendars or whatever, there's more and more projects that people are starting to try and raise money for conservation. And the thing is, all of this wildlife, without exception, is under threat from humans in some shape or form. There's nothing any of you have photographed that is not under threat. Do your research, understand what the challenges are that are facing them, find organizations that are supporting the conservation and try and get involved with them maybe. That sense of purpose has given me a new lease on my photography. And that's what I'd say, find a sense of purpose with your photography and then it will come from your heart. Wow. So you didn't really hesitate that day afterwards. You said, I'm going to start it. Just, you just do it, right? Basically. <laughs> It took me like six to nine months of working out how I do it. I didn't like the next day wake up. I was like, okay, if I'm going to do a book, how does that work? How do you publish it? How do you find an editor? So I did lots and lots of asking around and talking to people. But the more I did, the more determined I got in my head that this was what I was going to do. Wow. Okay. So that's really good advice. So first you have to have the courage to find your purpose. I think that is super important. A, a lot of time where we, we focus so much in the photography, but in my mind, wildlife photography is very special compared to, not to say any bad things about other uh, photography genre, but for wildlife, we are not only creating art, but these animals that give us a you know, short glimpse into their life, they are facing a lots of difficulties and to pay respect to them and to help them. There is a huge responsibility to every one of us who have this privilege to even go out and see these animals. So I think that is uh, just uh, fascinating, Margot. Thank you so much for having this such a great role model for us to follow. And so I'll send out the link if you you guys want to learn more about remembering wildlife and Margot's contact. And if you have any questions, you can send it to me and I can send it to Margot about how to help conservation. All right, Margot, thank you again. Good luck. Reminder, we have to break the remembering lapis record, right? How, how much more money do we need to raise, Margot? Probably another fifteen thousand dollars or so, and we've got twenty-seven hours to do it. So okay, let's see. Okay. If, if I... people buy some safaris, that will get us there. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Look at the safari. What, what are you waiting for? This is why I decided to come on, Marco, come to have a talk because this is the, the least I could do to the wildlife. And I feel so excited that I can be a part of it. So yeah, thank you once again, Marco, and see you guys have a wonderful weekend and go to Remembering Tigers Kickstarter and share with you all your friends as well, because this is just so important. All right. Okay. Talk to you soon.